love having composed these pieces. I have to have a concept of what the piece is and work out what the piece is before I write notes. I don't write a melody. You know, many people think you just start writing a melody or a rhythm and your piece evolves that way, and for some composers it does. But for me, I have to kind of picture the entire piece. I even draw a graph of it. Until I know that, I can't write any music. So I know what kind of music it needs. So um, it's mostly not getting anything done. And then getting ideas, that's step number one, is the conception and the, the drawing of the graph. Then you actually have to get the pitches and the rhythms. And that's equally difficult for me. At least I know why they're there, what the purpose of those pitches and rhythms are. It's very hard. Uh, I do fall asleep. Uh, usually when I compose uh, after a short while or, um, well, just call friends and say, would you like me if this is a total failure because I'm writing a terrible piece and, uh, you know, this is the end. I've, I have no more, nothing else to say. You know, it's, the stone has been wrung dry. There's nothing left. There's no liquid left. You know, the stone is a stone now. and. Uh, you have to understand that. And I do have that insecurity um, until the piece is about half finished. And then when it's about half finished, I start to say, you know, this might actually be a piece. And then it goes much faster. The Ghost of Versailles dealt with the past and the present. I dealt with the 18th century and the 20th century uh, superimposed uh, separately and going off into even 21st century sounds. So it, it was uh, an idea of, of being able to go literally back to the 18th century and yet not be stuck there. Actually, the plot of The Ghost of Versailles was uh, dictated by my desire to have, um, not to be caught like Stravinsky was with the Reg's Progress in writing a neoclassic work, but to write a work in the world of, as I put it to my, my um, librettist, William M. Hoffman, a world of smoke. And uh, in that world of smoke, you could see the 18th century, and then you could leap into it and be in the 18th century, and then you could fog out of the 18th century back into the world of smoke. And the world of ghosts was created to create a world of smoke for me, a world that has no time and no dimension in which I could do anything. In the red violin, there were a lot of scenes of a violinist or even a whole bunch of violinists playing, um, and in those cases, you really have to um, write the music first because the fingers and the bowing have to be synchronized. And you can't synchronize to something that uh, after, that you can't have someone just go like this and write a piece based on that because it looks absolutely phony. This is actually a very accurate movie. Um, there were about uh, six red violins constructed so that the uh, kinds of woods used in the uh, fingerboard and tailpiece and various kinds of things that changed over 300 years actually changed. Um, so it was, and the early stuff was pitched down a half step, uh, all because Baroque pitch is lower. Um, and I wrote all the music, but I, had to, we had to really imagine that we were in different eras at different times. So I had to write everything that was on camera, which meant all of those etudes that he plays on solo violin, 
It meant the gypsy music, it meant the monastery music with the orchestra of violins. Um, then we recorded that, and then they went to Europe and shot the movie in five countries. I was commissioned by Carnegie Hall to write a major song cycle for Sylvia McNair, and I wanted to write an American piece, a poem uh, or poetry that was uh, familiar to the entire nation, to the world. And a friend of mine told me you should look at the lyrics of the songs of Bob Dylan because they're really quite remarkable. Hey, Mr. Tambourine Man, play a song for me. He'll try to try to mourn and I'll come on. Uh, and it's out on recording and got two Grammys, I'm happy to say. Um, and I'm happiest to say I got one for the piece, but the singer, Hila Plitman, who is totally unknown, I helped produce her, but I also think she's one of the great singers of the world. And uh, she won a Grammy for Best Classical Vocal Performance over Bartoli and, you know, over <laughs> Rene, and you'd never expect someone whom nobody ever heard of winning over these super, super, superstars. Uh, so I feel very good about that. Since 1974, I've been teaching at Lehman, and I love teaching at Lehman. I love the students, the atmosphere. I think it's a fabulous school, and I, uh, our department is a wonderful department of people who really know what they're doing. And I got to teach composition to classes as an orchestration. I started out at the 101s, the general music, but I ended up teaching a lot of different things a course in opera, a course in this, a course in that. But I ended up doing what I really want to do, which is teach composition to classes. And that's more fun than anything you can imagine. Um, and the kids are all different qualities of um, knowledge. They come in, some of them have composed, some of them have never composed before. And to see what you can pull out of them, uh, a student who's never written music before, to actually compose music and hear it back and watch the expression on his or her face is worth a lot. I, I, I treasure those, those moments. <laughs>